Hello Tangerines from Querétaro, Mexico. As many of you know by now, we recently moved to this city just two months ago and since then we've bumped into a lot of people, a shocking amount of people that are like, hey, I'm moving here because of you guys or we get comments and emails saying something along those lines. So obviously we've said a lot of great things about this city. We love it enough to have signed a one-year lease here and this is only the second time that's ever happened in Mexico. So we thought it's only fitting if we balance it out a little bit and tell you some of the reasons why you should not move to Querétaro, Mexico. One reason you might not want to move to Querétaro is if you're looking for a really low cost of living city. So in Mexico, the cost of living is definitely going to be lower than the US and Canada as a whole, but this city in particular is above average and that mm -hmm. kind of correlates to the wealth of the city. Mm -hmm. The wealthier the city, the more wealth that's here, the higher the prices are gonna be. And that is the case throughout the city. It's still, I think, like 50 to 75% of the cost of where we uh, were living before coming to Mexico in Phoenix, Arizona. Yeah, but I'd, probably, I'd probably say around 50%. Yeah. Well, I mean, it just depends on the area because there uh -huh. are some extremely wealthy yeah. areas with extremely no nice restaurants and very, very high prices. If you're looking for like the cheapest cities that we've ever seen, Orizaba Veracruz is one, San Cristobal de las Casas in Chiapas is one, but here, no. <laughs> <laughs> you should also not move to Querétaro if you don't do well at altitude. To me, it honestly doesn't even seem like we're that high up, but it's actually at 6,000 feet of elevation and we're surrounded in the mountains and everything. We're fine with it because we've been working our way up in elevation throughout Mexico because we've been in central Mexico for a little bit now, um, six, seven, eight months prior to this. But if you get altitude sickness, then this might not be the place for you. Another reason why this city might not be right for you is if you're looking for a place with a huge expat population like a San Miguel de Allende or Ajijic or Puerto Vallarta, a place like that. Yeah, I mean, it's not to say that there aren't expats here. There are definitely lots of foreigners, but you really have to make a conscious effort to meet up with those people if mm -hmm. you're looking to um, have the familiarity of somebody that understands your culture and speaks your language, whereas in those places like you were talking about, San Miguel de Allende or Ajijic, they're much mm -hmm. smaller and there's a huge concentration of expats. So you bump into people yeah. that are, you know, from the US, Canada, everywhere. Yeah, like here we'll go to a big restaurant. Like we're here in Alamos right now and we like a place called Almocero. This place will be packed. We'll go in there and we will be the only gringos. So in a place like this, like Maddie was saying, you really have to reach out to those people if you want to meet up with them. But if you're looking for cats, they're everywhere! It's cats! Oh my gosh, it's cats! <laughs> They really are everywhere. <laughs> the next reason you might not like Querétaro is the traffic. And while the traffic during rush hour and heavy traffic times is not as bad as somewhere like Mexico City, it still does have rush hour. And I mean, to me, it's not that bad. It doesn't take you double or triple the amount of time to get a place uh, as regular when there's no traffic, but it still does exist. I do wish you the best of luck if you're trying to go somewhere that has no traffic though, because <laughs> that's going to be really hard to find. Yeah, you're gonna have to go to a small town, but you might be like, you guys are liars. I see the streets right here and there's no cars on it. Well, we're back in a quiet neighborhood. Yes, <laughs> this is not a main road by any means. One reason why you might not want to move to Querétaro is the high radiation in the aquifer. I have to say something here though. I was only told this. I haven't researched this at all. So that might be something you want to look into if you're considering Querétaro as a place to move or visit. What I can say for an almost absolute fact is that Querétaro also has really, really hard water, which means it dries out your skin and your hair. I'm constantly applying lotion to my very, very ashy skin. And I know this for an almost fact because I grew up in Phoenix and and that also is a city with really hard water, really mineralized water. Another huge consideration when moving somewhere is the weather. Yeah, that was actually what was the biggest deal breaker for us that made us leave the Riviera Maya. Mm -hmm. What one of was just the weather. But speaking of the Riviera Maya, that actually is some people's dream. <laughs> yeah, like moving to a beach destination with hot weather year round. Well, here you are not going to get a beach and you're not going to get hot weather year round. Yeah, it does get hot in the summer. And to me, it's perfect the amount of heat it gets into maybe like the high 80s as the absolute highest but it cools down into the 50s at night so it's totally tolerable you can open up your doors and windows and get the fresh breeze and everything um, but it is pretty dry so that can be a deal breaker for some people that it dries out your skin and your lungs and everything else and in addition to it being so dry hardly any humidity at all which is 
<laughs> just how I like it, but... <laughs> yeah, so, so also, far, I've thought the weather was amazing. But if anything, it's gonna be too cold for me here. Could be. We haven't, we haven't gotten to a winter yet, so I don't know how those cold temperatures are. We've been told that for about two or three weeks out of the year, you need a little space heater. So that, to me, it doesn't say that it's too bad, but it could be, I don't know. Um, what I was gonna say, though, is with it being very dry, when we got here, the city was very crispy. It was not as green and beautiful mm -hmm. and lush as it is right now. And with that came lots of dust because it was super, mm -hmm. super windy. Yeah. So that could be an even bigger deal breaker for some people, especially those with allergies or asthma or something. And you've been dealing with this. You haven't Just, had allergies in ages, yeah, but forever. you've been sneezing like crazy lately. Mm -hmm. When the wind picks up all that dust and stuff and the pollen and everything else, it can aggravate the allergies. So that's a huge consideration you might want to know about. Yet another potential big downside about Querétaro is if you're looking for a sense of community, this might not be the place for you. Given that it is a pretty big city, you're Over not Over a million gonna, people. Yeah, you're not gonna have the like small town community vibe that you would have in small towns. <laughs> <And> <laughs> yeah. we, we actually heard from some people that this can be kind of a cliquish city, like you might have difficulty breaking into various social circles and stuff, but I haven't really felt that at all. Yeah, you? to be honest, I think our neighbors are super friendly. I think there is no other place in Mexico where I've made so many friends so quickly mm -hmm. and felt like I fit in so quickly as I have here. And, and that people just like welcome us with open arms, like, oh, you're new in this city well here let me tell you some recommendations I can take you here or like hey do you need a truck for anything I can offer that up to you like everybody has been like that super friendly super amazing I, except I don't know what we're doing here right now with all this that we're telling you because I'm pretty sure we're supposed to be playing devil's advocate oh, right yeah, now that's right and explaining why you shouldn't live in Querétaro <laughs> and we're failing at that horribly because well we really like it here so <laughs> If you're finding this video helpful, don't forget to hit the subscribe button so you can see more videos like it. We release a new video every Saturday morning. Another reason why you might not want to move to Querétaro is it can feel exclusive at times. There's a ton of gated communities here. There's all kinds of country clubs and things like that, special private clubs, so you might feel like you're out of the loop. Or at the very least, that there's a lot of parts of the city that you're not gonna ever get to see unless you know someone inside of those complexes, places that you can't go unless you have a pass or that kind of thing. Another reason Querétaro might not be the city for you is if you're looking for a very casual place to live, as in you wanna wear shorts and shorts and t-shirts and flip-flops <laughs> everywhere. Like a beach destination would be an obvious example of that. Here, I feel like people are much more focused on dressing nice, dressing classy, probably because it is a wealthier city uh, so generally people are focused on wearing uh, nicer clothes often nicer brands too so whenever I go out in just like a t-shirt and shorts I do feel a little underdressed especially depending on the type the type of restaurants that we want to go to yet another reason Querétaro might not be the right city for you is if you're not willing to learn some Spanish if you go around the city you're gonna see Spanish everywhere. You're not gonna see English menus and restaurants and everyone you hear or almost everyone is going to be speaking Spanish. If you want to find English, there are a lot of English speakers here, but you really have to ask. You really have to go looking for it. So if you would like to learn some Spanish, our favorite program to do that is called Rocket Languages. It's an awesome course, super thorough and the best value for your money course that we have seen. If you'd like to check that out, you can go to tangerinespanish.com. That's our affiliate link. It will take you right to their website. And that's tangerinespanish.com. Oh, and I almost forgot to mention that this weekend they're running their Independence Day sales. So it's even a better deal than it normally is. It's only for the first thousand courses sold and it's this weekend only. So if you want to check it out, tangerinespanish.com. Querétaro also might not be the right city for you if you're looking for somewhere that is super, super 100% walkable. Again, with the big city thing, it's very hard for a place that's yeah. a huge city city to be walkable. There are some neighborhoods that are more so than others, but as a whole, I think you're basically going to either need a bike or to utilize Uber a lot, public transportation, or even have a car. It's not very walkable outside of those pockets that do have a lot yeah. in them, like Historic Center. Mm -hmm. Yeah, or... that, that's a great place because you not only have nice sidewalks, but there's a lot of stuff close in proximity that yes. is in walking distance. Exactly. Maddie just mentioned utilizing Uber, and while we do appreciate that Querétaro actually has Uber. About half the cities we've been to in Mexico do not. 
they take a long time to pick you up here. They cancel all the time and we really have to like account for 15 minutes for them just to pick us up if we want to use Uber here. That's even more of a downside if you're like, oh, I want a place that's 100% walkable or oh, I don't have to worry, I'll just take Uber. You actually mm. might need to get a car here because it can be super inconvenient and you can't really plan your life around that if you have to be to work at a certain time, to meetings at a certain time, and you're having mm -hmm. to leave lots of extra chunks of time just for the Ubers to show up. So it could be kind of annoying. Another reason you might not want to move to Queretaro is if you want to live in a city that has a thousand things to do. This is a pretty big city. There's a million people living here. However, it's not like Guadalajara or Mexico City in that those places there's basically an unlimited number of things to do, things to see, places to visit, things like that. So if you're looking for some place like that, maybe check out one of those cities instead. Another pretty big downside about Querétaro is that it kind of does have the go, go, go rat race vibe that you often find in big working cities because of course it is a big working city and right now we're trying to make friends and I'm constantly hearing back, oh, I'm so busy right now. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm really busy this week. So let's plan blah, blah, blah down the line. And of course that makes sense. Everybody's working. Everybody's trying to make a living. Lots of people are going to school here, going to college here. So if you're looking for something that's super laid back, this might not be the place. Speaking of not being laid back, a laid back vibe is exactly what I thought I was looking for when moving to Mexico. I thought I was going to end up in Puerto Escondido, that we were going to have a place near the ocean where we would leave the windows open at night and have the nice ocean breeze coming in. We'd spend half of our day in a hammock and in the morning we would walk to the local market and get some fresh produce for that day. Well, here you're not gonna find that. Probably going to be doing your grocery shopping at a supermarket. You're probably going to be doing other shopping at one of the mini big box store type places, or you might be doing your shopping at malls. So if you're looking for that slow pace of life where you spend half your day in a hammock and find yourself at a mercado every day, well then this might not be the place for you. And speaking of vibes, another thing that Querétaro is not really is the colorful, vibrant, um, historic Mexico. As a whole, it's a very modern city, so you do have the historic center where there's colonial style architecture and very beautiful uh, traditional, like traditional Mexico type buildings. And there are some other places throughout the city that have that, but as a whole, like I said, it's very modern. It's not a Guanajuato, it's not a Oaxaca type of vibe. So if that's what you're going for, Querétaro is not the city for you. The next reason why you might not want to move to Querétaro is if you want a place that's not like the US or Canada at all. Querétaro is a very wealthy city. There are tons of super nice neighborhoods. There's lots of really nice malls and new hospitals and nice shopping centers, things like that. So if you're looking for something different, maybe try like a smaller town. And perhaps the number one Querétaro deal breaker, according to people in our comment section, is the process of finding a person to stop gonging. That Gong bell! That bell. <laughs> <laughs> oh. You done? <laughs> and... <laughs> wow. <laughs> is the process of finding a rental. Yeah, our rental process was way more involved and much more formal Super than, any, stressful. than anything else we've experienced in Mexico. Not to mention expensive, much more expensive. So if you want a place that's very informal, you meet your landlord, you pay your rent in cash, and it's there's no contracts really, Querétaro is probably not going to be uh -huh. the place for you. If, on the other hand, you do want to find out what the process was like for us, on the screen here is the video that we made about everything that it took for us to find our rental. And as you could probably guess by some of the other things we've said in this video, we absolutely love it here and it was worth it in the end. Please don't forget to subscribe to our channel before you head out. And one more thing, gong that bell so you get notified the next time we release a new video on Saturday morning.